I want to thank you for inviting me to share some views on the encyclic Laudato Si. With this encyclic and with this, his presence at this summit, the Pope sends a message of deep concern regarding the environmental challenges the world is facing. His contribution in creating a public momentum for change is difficult to overestimate. But let me come to the questions on the pre-2020 mitigation gap. The encyclical letter states that, is, that, is, that it is remarkable how weak international political responses have been. I would agree. The world is not on track towards a sustainable future, and we, politicians, need to do more. This is in particular the case if we look at the global mitigation effort. The latest UNEP emission gap report from November 2014 gives clear evidence that a significant gap still remains to the bridge between the collective level of mitigation ambition up to 2020 and the global emissions trajectory in line with the objective of staying below two degrees. Belgium continues to support the conditional offer of the EU to move from a 20% target to a 30% reduction by 2020 compared to 1990 as part of a global and comprehensive agreement for the period beyond 2012, provided that other developed, developed countries commit themselves to comparable emission reductions and that more advanced developing countries contribute adequately according to their responsibilities and respective capabilities. For Belgium, it is a priority to embed climate policies in the broader context of sustainable development, one of my ministerial competencies. At le and let me give one practical example of how we have been trying to achieve this. In our federal CDM purchase program, we included a screening of the contribution to sustainable development of CDM projects with involvement of stakeholders in Belgium and in the host country. I fully subscribe to the statement in Laudato Si that a type of development which did not respect and promote human rights would not be really worthy of men. In this context, it is a pleasure for me to inform you that the recent in Environment Council stressed the importance of human rights, gender equality, and a just transition of the workforce in the context of climate action. We need to integrate such principles in the formulation and the implementation of our climate policies. Energy efficiency and renew renewable energy are indeed the main avenues to reduce greenhouse gas emission from the energy sector in the future. From five measures proposed in a, the bridging scenario by the International Energy Agency, both deliver most emission reduction by 2030, energy efficiency 49%, renewables 17%. At the same time, we need to ensure you in universal access to affordable, reliable and modern energy services for all, which is the first sub-goal under the Energy Sustainable Development Goal. The second and the third sub-goal rightly refer to energy efficiency and rene renewable energy. In that context, I would like to refer to the good cooperation between Belgium and Rwanda on renewable energy and with Mo Mozambique on sustain sustainable charcoal. With regard to our que your question on the long-term goal, let me start from the broader picture. In order to be durable and effective, the, the Paris Agreement should set out a long-term global mitigation goal in line with the below two degrees objective, contain a dynamic five 
yearly mitigation ambition mechanism in which all parties should be required to, revis to revisit their commi commitments. commitments. In our view, this means all parties should pursue transformative ways toward a long-term vision of global and sustainable climate neutrality and climate resilience in the second half of this century. In order to say below two degrees, global greenhouse gas emissions need to peak by 2020, at the latest, be reduced by at least 50% by 2050 compared to 1990, and be near zero or below by 2000. This is consistent with the IP IPCC findings. More in particular with regard to the 1.5 versus 2 degree question, let me highlight some important elements. One of these, because one minute left. More in particular with regard to the 1.5 versus 2 degree, this, Belgium and the EU are fully aware of the vulnerability of least developed countries and small island developing states for the adverse impacts of climate change, in particular if temperature rise would exceed 2 degrees Celsius compared to the pre-industrial levels. As we say, thank you for this opportunity. Et merci pour votre patience. J'ai encore des progrès à Thank faire. Thank you very much for your patience. I have quite a bit of progress to make in English.